Well, it's a very prevalent behavior now. Um, I think partially because there's laws in that vary by state as to access to both me medicinal cannabis, marijuana, and then also now s many states, including mine, have recreational uh, marijuana that's available. And I say marijuana, but it's actually the cannabis products, and there's now very many of them, THC specific, and the CBD, and then there's even more. So there's 60 different cannabinoids. So it's it's really a very heterogeneous product. So that's the first thing. And so um, my patients, I tell them we have pretty limited data to help us in terms of informing them about safety and about sort of health benefits and health risks. Certainly it's a very active area of research, um, but recognize that it's sort of a natural product and because it's natural, it, it, we're not always clear in a given product exactly what's in that product. And that I treat it like any other herbal supplement. So when my patients ask me about whether they should use the latest and greatest thing they saw on the internet for their liver, I tell them that I, I think that that's not a good thing to do because we don't always know if that herb is going to be um, pure, whether there's going to be contaminates in that. And many of them have not been studied in the context of individuals with liver disease. I take the same tact with, with the cannab cannabis products is that we really don't have a lot of data about their safety. We don't know about their purity. There may be things that are in them that could be beneficial, but also potentially harmful. So patients should go into it with the knowledge that there's limited data to help us. Um, and so in general, I'm advising people to treat it as a little bit of a, um, an unknown. And, and I think physicians, we need to counsel our patients that you know, there are potentially some harms that we just, you know, we can't assume that it's because it's natural and because of all the things they read on the internet that it's going to be a beneficial uh, product and that really they have to, I think when they're using it, recognize there could be some potential harms. So I'm trying to, you know, be open-minded because many people do feel like they uh, do want to try it and see if there's some health benefits for a particular health problem. But I think always we say, from the point of view of your liver disease, we have less information about sort of potential benefits versus harms. There is some data in the hep C arena. So that's the hepatitis C is probably where there actually are some human studies and some publications. And for individuals who have hepatitis C who are using daily cannabis, we have prior studies that suggested those, those individuals were at higher risk of having fibrosis progression. And there's some animal data to support that. We know that when the liver develops fibrosis, that there is expression of CB, CB1 and CB2 receptors. So, so the cannabinoid receptors are expressed on fibrotic tissue. Some of them are pro-fibrogenic, some of them are anti-fibrogenic. And you know, depending on the cannabinoid product, those receptors could be affected differently. So in a given individual with this very variable product that we have the, of marijuana, it may actually be a potential risk for a pro-fibrogenic effect. So you could have acceleration. So I think the cautious thing to do, what I tell patients is, if you're going to use marijuana products, then don't use them daily because the data is most consistent for daily use of marijuana. Less frequent use, it's the, the studies don't suggest that there's a, a relationship. So my counseling to patients is first of all, know that it's an area where we have very limited data. And then if you feel you are getting a benefit from its use, then really from the liver standpoint, if you have an underlying liver disease, we would I would advise not to use it daily. So those are the two main messages that I give to patients, and that's the counseling information I give them. I think the other area where um, at least my colleagues, um, my physician colleagues often, um, we have great discussions is around this area of uh, what about the patients that have advanced liver disease and are now are being considered for transplant, and will their use of cannabis um, impact their ability to get on a waiting list? And uh, that's where we have to recognize that there's a lot of uh, program by program variation. It varies by state and it varies within states on the program's policy. Um, in California, where we now have very liberal laws regarding use of marijuana, our transplant program no longer considers that um, use of, of marijuana to be a reason that individuals um, are prohibited from being listed and we, there's no penalty in terms of their use of marijuana. Um, we do actually still test for it, so we actually know that people are using it and we then counsel them about what we think are the potential risks of them being on marijuana, but it doesn't limit anybody from being considered for listing. 
but there are states where marijuana is not in any form legal and where they do prohibit the use of marijuana and so if individuals test positive for it they will either not be able to be listed or if they use marijuana while on the list they could be uh, taken off the list so um, I think the message should be that unless there's a you know again patients should be told that we're not clear what the benefits are and in the context of you potentially being a transplant candidate it could in fact have a negative impact on your ability to be listed so the best thing to do would be to not use so we still counsel um, generally that we don't want individuals to be using marijuana um, and certainly in states where there's uh, very specific laws against its use then that could potentially be a barrier to the patient being considered for transplant so we as physicians need to inform our patients of those kinds of, of, of um, limitations that might be in place that programs do have rules about this and we don't want to in fact have anybody minimize their chance of being um, eligible for a transplant.